Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, in today's class we are going to learn about important group of infections which occur in the healthcare settings that is the hospital acquired infections. This takes us to the lesson objective, we are going to learn at the end of this lesson what are healthcare associated infections, why are they important, what is their pathogenesis and how do we go for their laboratory diagnosis. As customary, let us consider a case of a man who acquired hospital acquired infections and how did we go in detailed laboratory investigations in this case and also how can we prevent such infections. This was 32 year old man who met with severe road traffic accident and he suffered multiple fractures and also his vehicle got into fire and he suffered 30 percent burn injuries. This patient was brought in a state of shock, he was admitted to intensive care unit, he was soon intubated, he also later developed ventilator associated pneumonia as he needed some respiratory assistance, he was put on ventilator on the 6th day of admission and he was also given lot of broad spectrum antibiotics like piperacillin, tazobactam combination, levofloxacillin, linezolid and also voriconazole. Here the patient was loaded with all broad spectrum high end antibiotics which also took care of gram positive, gram negative organisms plus the fungi. Let us see what happened to the patient later. In spite of this broad spectrum antibiotic therapy, he started developing fever on the 8th day of treatment and the fever continued, he also developed leukocytosis went into hypovolemic shock and condition of the patient started to deteriorate. This patient now in the hospital having all kinds of complications, the patient was also exposed to lot of sources of microorganisms because he was having endotracheal tube in place, central venous catheter was on peripheral intravenous lines were put up and also his bladder was catheterized. So, these were all the sources for him plus here the patient was also having severe burn injuries which also invited lot of microorganisms to invade him. All this development or deteriorating condition of this patient started bothering us and we started working up towards what is a detailed microbiological workup here and what are the microorganisms causing fever in spite of wide antibiotic coverage. His endotracheal aspirate was collected plus two sets of blood cultures were collected in this case and they were sent to detail microbiological workup. The blood cultures were put up, endotracheal swab were put up for culture. We grew non-lactose fermenting colonies on McConkey agar. On biochemical analysis they were oxidase negative and we also did a gram stain from culture, it showed that the organisms were small pleomorphic gram negative bacilli. The biochemical identification gave us identity of this organism that it is a acinetobacter. A detailed antibiotic sensitivity was also done in this case and we came to know that this organism was resistant to multiple antibiotics we tested. However, it was sensitive to cholestin. cholestin is supposed to work against cell walls of gram negative bacteria, however it does not act on the gram positive bacteria. So, in this case there was only one important lifeline we got was the organism was sensitive to cholestin. immediately the report was sent to the treating physician that it we recovered the multi drug resistant acinetobacter baumeni and which was sensitive to only cholestin. 
the patient was started on specific treatment that is cholestin and his condition started improving and we could discharge the patient after one and half months of hospital stay. And rest of the time he was given all barrier type of care and all the infection control measures were taken for this patient. Now after having discussed the case of hospital acquired infection, let us discuss this topic under following headings. What are hospital acquired infection or healthcare associated infection as it is uh, renamed in the recent times? We will see what is the definition, what is the burden of such infection and what are the different types. We will also look into what is their pathogenesis and also the detailed laboratory workup. We are going to consider two important organisms in this class that is the acinetobacter as we have isolated in our index case here and also another important bug we are going to come across in the hospital settings is the pseudomonas. Let us begin with what are the healthcare associated infections. By definition healthcare associated infections are those which develop after 48 to 72 hours of treatment in any healthcare facility. They should not be present or in the incubation period at the time of admission and this definition also includes such cases which are contracted in the hospital but they present later after discharge. In the last few decades these healthcare associated infections have become the important cause of mortality and morbidity mainly because there is increase in the number of immunocompromised patient plus there are lot of super bugs we are coming across which are mostly pan resistant or multi drug resistant. Hence it is very important to understand what are these infections, why are they important and why are they the cause of burden not only on the economy but also on the patient working hours and also the patient stay. They are also called as the nosocomial infections. Sometimes physician induced infections are also included in the healthcare associated infections. What is the burden of healthcare associated infections? All over the world it is estimated that developing countries have got more burden, the burden is as high as up to 25 percent. However, the prevalence in the developed countries is much lower, it could be between 5 to 10 percent. What is important here, most of these infections are preventable. However, in the next few classes, one of the faculty member is going to address on how do we prevent such infections. But it is important to know that 20 to 40 percent of such infections can be prevented. There has been a long time dialogue and discussions on associated mortality and morbidity in healthcare associated infections. Since the time of Semmelweis, the mortality was reported very high. This is the important burden. Let us now understand what are the different types of healthcare associated infections. The most commonest one is catheter associated urinary tract infections. This is in short called as the CAUTI. It can be as high as up to 40 percent. These are the causative organisms Escherichia coli, Proteus pseudomonas and Klebsiella. The next group of infections are the gastrointestinal infections which may be as high up to 5 to 10 percent caused by Salmonella, Shigella, Staphylococci and the Clostridium difficile. The next one could be ventilatory associated pneumonia called as VAP. They can be contributing up to 15 to 20 percent. The organisms are Staphylococcus aureus, Haemophilus influenzae and some viruses. The next group is very important wound infections which are very commonly encountered. The wound infections can be classified as the surgical and non-surgical infections. The surgical ones are usually going to appear after any surgery. Altogether surgical non-surgical can contribute up to 18 percent of healthcare associated infections. The non-surgical ones can be of different types. They can be simple stitch abscesses, umbilical stump infections ulcers as a result of some interventions, burns, injection abscess, etc. What are those organisms which can cause such infections? Again the Staphylococcus aureus, especially the MRSA, methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus, Pseudomonas, Enterobacters, 
and other gram negative bacteria can all cause these wound infections because they can be as a part of endogenous source. The next group is the bloodstream infections which contribute up to 10 to 15 percent of infections. The important one being bacteremia and septicemias. In the index case we discussed that there are some other infections like hepatitis, transfusion associated infections they could be syphilis, malaria and also hepatitis, HIV and others. They could be tuberculosis, influenza, tetanus. So, this is the whole spectrum of healthcare associated infections. Let us now move on to pathogenesis of such infections. Let us in detail understand the etiology, source, mode of infection and the other predisposing causes. What is the etiology of healthcare associated infections? What are those pathogens which can cause such infection? Are they having some added advantages or virulence factors? Yes, they do have some important virulence factors. First of all, any pathogen can cause healthcare associated infection more commonly than others because they are more hardy or they can sustain any harsh environmental conditions. On the other hand, they can also survive in the disinfectants on the soaps and antiseptics what we use they will be there very much in those solutions and they are able to cause the infection in a hospital. Such organisms are going to be usually resistant to the antiseptics and the disinfectants and they thrive in the moist and harsh environmental conditions as well. Coming to the etiology of healthcare associated infections, when we talk of etiology, I said some important organisms like Pseudomonas, Acinetobacter, Staphylococcus especially the methicillin resistant ones are very common in a healthcare setting. Escape group of organisms as very commonly called as escape because they have escaped all the prevention measures. So, let us name them what are those escape group of organisms. E stands for Enterococcus fischium, they are usually vancomycin resistant, S for Staphylococcus aureus, Klebsiella pneumoniae, Acinetobacter baumani, Pseudomonas aeruginosa and Enterobacter species. There are three important characters of escape group of organisms which we need to remember. The first character is that as said they are multi-drug resistant but sensitive usually to cholestin as we found in our index case. These organisms are usually found resistant to all first line antibiotics like vancomycin, ampicillin and aminoglycosides. In this group Staphylococcus aureus is usually known to be reliably sensitive to vancomycin. Vancomycin is the drug which is active against the gram positive group of organisms, but some of them have also started developing resistance which are called as vancomycin resistant Staphylococcus aureus strains. We should not be surprised that nowadays we are also coming across such resistant Staphylococcus aureus. The second property is that they cause commonly pneumonia, uh, urinary tract infection, wound infections and bacteremia. They are usually severe in nature. The third important point we need to remember about them is that they are associated with high mortality and morbidity. As also discussed in our case, the patient he was almost close to death. So, these are three important points we need to remember about escape group of organisms. As I said in this class we are going to learn a little bit more about two organisms which are very important in healthcare settings the Acinetobacter and the Pseudomonas group of organisms. Now, let us consider Acinetobacter. Acinetobacter I can say is like a cousin of Pseudomonas. They also belong to non-fermenters family. Morphologically both are similar. Then how do we differentiate between these two organisms? One of them is non-motile and Acinetobacter is oxidase negative and the Pseudomonas is oxidase positive. This is how in the lab we usually identify them otherwise they look almost similar. So, the Acinetobacter group of organisms are gram negative bacilli, pleomorphic in nature and they are cocobacilli. They do not ferment lactose sugar. However, when you grow them on McConkie agar instead of appearing pale or colorless sometimes they appear as light pink colored colonies. This could be mainly because of oxidative utilization of lactose sugar. So, we should not confuse that they are lactose fermenters. 
they are definitely non fermenters but they look pink on mcconkey maybe because of the reason they oxidatively utilize lactose these organisms are intrinsically resistant to beta lactams that is because they possess the chromosomal genes for inducible beta lactamase they can be resistant to carbapenems these organisms are usually multi drug resistant they are found very much in the healthcare settings and they are spreading rapidly globally but only thing we should be happy about is that not many reports about the pan resistant one pan resistant organism is the one which is completely resistant to all the available antibiotics including the third line so these are some of the important points about acinetobacter it very closely resembles the characters of pseudomonas coming to the pseudomonas it is a short gram negative bacillus medically important pseudomonas genus consist about 10 important species which can cause infections in human beings they have a very mild polysaccharide capsule that is the reason that when we see these organisms in the cases with the cystic fibrosis we see their sputa being very sticky or slimy that is because of the polysaccharide capsule which is present in these organisms and pseudomonas is the most important causative agent in cystic fibrosis it is also important to remember that these organisms are very hardy or that means they can survive anywhere in the hospital in any moist areas they are found in the toilets in the sink in the flower vases on the soaps disinfectants you name it these organisms can be present anywhere in and around the patients it is an obligate aerobic organism and it is a non fermenter it is oxidase positive and this is the point i said is important to differentiate between acinetobacter and the pseudomonas another important point is that it produces diffusible pigment and this is how it was first recovered from blue pus because this organism produces pyocyanin pyoverdin and pyorubin these organisms produce typical odor when they grow on culture that is the reason that some of the burn wards will be having a very typical fruity odor just now we have discussed about the etiology of healthcare associated infections not only pseudomonas acinetobacter and staphylococcus there are other important ones the methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus is very well known organism causing bacteremia septicemia especially in patients who have been catheterized other organisms can be candida albicans stenotropomonas maltophilia clostridium difficile escherichia coli mycobacterium tuberculosis non tuberculous mycobacteria legionnaires organism now let us look into their pathogenesis how are they more capable or enabled as we compare to the other organisms that is because mainly they have virulence factors organisms like pseudomonas or the acinetobacter both of them can produce exotoxins or they can be having lipopolysaccharide endotoxin which is responsible for causing endotoxic shock or the septicemia which is the ultimate result in case of any hospital in acquired infection polysaccharide capsule especially in case of pseudomonas is important because the polysaccharide capsule is the one which prevents the entry of drug into the organism that is one of the drug resistant mechanisms in case of pseudomonas more importantly that these organisms are hardy so where are they present let me repeat that they may be found in the sink toilet on the mops on the floor ventilator units dialysis units soaps detergent antiseptic you take anything they are present on that and that is the reason we have explored some of the detergents and the antiseptics for devising the selective media pseudomonas organisms after having learnt about the virulence factors what is the source of infection the source can be endogenous that means the patient may be harboring the organisms on their own body or they may be coming from the external source exogenous and endogenous the endogenous one can be coming from cross infections from the flora of the next patient they can be coming through the direct contact or through the airborne route or through healthcare personnel coming to the exogenous source what are the different areas which may be harboring these organism one could be the hospital environment itself or it could be from the surfaces of any healthcare facilities like the patient caring tables or they could be from the contaminated inanimate objects or the fomites 
these fomites can be transferring the organisms from a patient to patient that is cross infection or healthcare personnel. So, these are some of the sources of infection. Now, once we have the source of organisms in and around patient, how are they going to get transmitted? The routes of transmission can be through direct contact from the hands of the patients or healthcare personnel or they can be from the clothings, fomites. It could also be airborne, there can be inhalation of the dust oral route, parenteral route, it is usually through some healthcare interventions, they can also be iatrogenic infection. What is iatrogenic infection? Iatrogenic are the ones which are as a result of any diagnostic or therapeutic procedures. After having learnt the mode of transmission, let us see what are some predisposing factors. Not all of them who get admitted in the hospital usually develop any infection. What are those people who have more predilection for development of such infection? Again as I said, there are some patient factors, hospital factors and the pathogen factors. What are those factors related to hospital environment itself? Overcrowding, it can be because of unclean environment or due to any interventions. Host related or patient related factors, it could be because of age of the patient, extremes of age, one of the risk factor. Next is, if the patient is already on some implants or any devices, catheters and immunocompromised nature is one important factor and association of multiple trauma is another reason. What are pathogen related factors? The pathogen can be highly virulent, multidrug resistant, pan resistant or a super bug. Now, after having covered in detail about the pathogenesis including the etiology, modes of infection, source of infection and also the precipitating factors. Let us now consider laboratory diagnosis, especially concentrating more on the laboratory diagnosis of these two non-fermenters I mentioned. Laboratory diagnosis here in case of hospital acquired infection is like any other laboratory diagnosis involving the steps of microscopy culture, going for some serological test and molecular test. Usually, serological test and molecular test have got a little less of therapeutic implications. They are more for academic interest. We can type the organisms by using certain serological and molecular methods. This is mainly going to help us for prevention and control of infection like phage typing can be done and other molecular typing. Especially to study the resistance genes is nowadays has gained a lot of academic interest. Now, let us see like in any other laboratory diagnosis, proper sample collection is very crucial. It plays a key role in diagnosing hospital acquired infection. Proper sample collection should be done after applying right antiseptic. Once we collect the sample, immediate transport to the laboratory is also equally important. Same holds good when we are dealing with a case of any wound infection, maybe the organism there is pseudomonas, the pus as shown in the picture can be collected and immediately transferred. If we make a smear and stain, we see the small gram negative bacilli. A gross examination of the sample is also a very important point. Then we culture pus sample, we are going to grow it on non-selective and selective media. Non-selective media as I said in this particular picture, we can see that the organism has grown on the simple medium that has produced the uh, greenish diffusible pigment, we can see the greenish yellow pigment being produced and we can also grow them on selective media like cetrimide agar. When we grow pseudomonas on blood agar, it produces beta hemolytic colonies as we can see here. So, these are some of the characters of pseudomonas on culture which we need to remember. Once we grow them on culture media, it is also important to identify them. As we rightly described that the organism is going to produce greenish blue pigment you can see here it can also be demonstrated in a liquid culture here you can see the pyorubin pigment once we have grown the organisms again we are going to confirm their morphology by gram staining we can record the pigments being produced typical odor it produces fruity odor they are motile they are oxidase positive they are catalase positive and as i said they are very hardy organisms they can grow in higher temperature as high as up to 42 degrees. So, these are all some characters which will help us identify the organism in the laboratory. What is very important here is to carry out their antibiotic sensitivity testing which can be life saving. 
as it happened in the case which we discussed. Here we are seeing antibiotic sensitivity plate very typical greenish blue pigment being produced and we can also see that it is almost resistant to many of the antibiotics. Hence it is important to test them against the first line of antibiotics then second line and also give the appropriate timely diagnosis so that it will help the physician to treat the patient and save him from complications. So, what we have done in the laboratory diagnosis of hospital infections is collecting the sample is important, transport is important. We are going to record the gross examination findings of the sample and also subject it to microscopy. We can culture them on the selective, non-selective media and identification by doing certain biochemical reactions and also carrying out the antibiotic sensitivity which is very, very important. Now, let us talk about what is a treatment when we come across organisms like Pseudomonas or Acinetobacter or any other multi-drug resistant organisms. The treatment is very important here. Initially to begin with the physician would have started them on the empirical line of therapy. After doing culture sensitivity, we have to switch over to the specific therapy. We can give when we are suspecting or when we have recovered Pseudomonas organisms, we treat them against anti-pseudomonal penicillins because we know that they are inherently resistant to beta lactams. The anti-pseudomonal penicillins like ticarcillin, piperacillin can be used or they are also supposed to be sensitive to newer fluoroquinolones or aminoglycosides. It is important to know that the drugs like imipenem have to be sparingly used and reserved mainly for pan resistant. Sometimes it can be used as a life saving drug. So, this is the treatment of healthcare associated infections. Now, let us talk a little bit about once we have diagnosed the case, we have treated them. It is also important to go for prevention of such outbreaks or isolated cases in the hospital or healthcare settings. We are not going to talk in detail. However, I will mention it is important to trace the source of the organisms and also curtail or prevent the spread is important. There are different steps in tracing the source. One is first of all, we need to identify that there is an outbreak. It has to be notified. And next step is to identify the source. The source can be present endogenous or from the exogenous. We need to locate the source. To do that, we have to properly collect the sample. From where do we collect the sample? We can collect the sample from any uh, particular ward from which we are suspecting the outbreak. It can be from the fomites, hospital staff, especially nasal carriage from the staff or from the hands is important. From the other patients, it is also good to collect the samples from the water, food, air or from blood and other specimen of the same or the other patients. Blood or blood products is important. Some injectables, disinfectant, antiseptic, these all can be the source for the outbreak. We need to trace the source. The fourth step here is to detect the cause, to know, to correlate the isolated organism and the one which we are isolating from any suspected source need to be correlated. Here some typing procedures are important which could be serological typing or molecular typing to know that both the organisms are genetically identical and to match the source and the causative organism is important. Then next step is to eliminate the source. There are different measures which we can take. We can eliminate if it is from the inanimate source then antiseptics, strong disinfectants have to be used or if it is from any healthcare personnel, they need to be properly treated. Then control of infection is also important that will be dealt by another faculty member in the next class. So, with this we have covered the hospital acquired infections under following headings which I mentioned. We have learnt about in detail healthcare associated infections, pathogenesis and also the laboratory diagnosis. Hope by this I have achieved the lesson objectives. These are pictures I have taken from various sources. I acknowledge. Thank you for your patient hearing.